Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you an OP bleed build for an Elden Ring. Now, the Rivers of Blood is probably the most iconic weapon for its ability to inflict bleed on targets, and it does a really good job of that. I'll be going over all the equipment that we're going to want for this build guide, as well as a general way in how to play it and the stat allocation. So, I guess first things first, I'll go over the stats here. So obviously we want to have Rivers of Blood upgraded as high as you possibly can. Now we need to have at least 12 strength, 18 dexterity, and 20 arcane to be able to equip this. And it scales heavily off of our dexterity stat. In the offhand, I like to have a Blood Naga Kiba because this also can be somewhat like the Rivers of Blood. The double slash has the same animations and the Naga Kiba is very large. So what we can even do is... If you don't want to go with the uh, Corpse Piler, which uses a bit more FP, you can actually go at it this way and just use the Nagakiba. So, that is an option, but I like to have both these equipped. You can go with the Yuji Katana in the offhand as well, and that's a pretty easy weapon to get. I'm also using the Dragon Communion Seal here, so the overall stats, I have it at level 50 here, but... If we're a lower level, I'll be talking about how you can allocate your stats accordingly. So the first things first is we want to get our Vigor up to 30. That's kind of the first requirement that you have for just your overall survivability's sake. And I got the Mind at 26 and Endurance at 30. This can also be swapped around depending on what you use most. So if you're someone that likes to spam the Corpse Piler, go a little bit higher in the Mind. But Endurance is good for running around and being able to equip items and uh, make sure that we can get our uh, poise up to a certain number there, which I'll talk about in a moment. I'm using 18 strength because that's required for the Nagakiba, but if you're using the Yuji Katana, just you know, go with the minimum stats for the weapons that you're using. Uh, dexterity, you can put the rest of the points into Dexterity. I got 60 there because it's going to give us more damage. I got 10 Intelligence because I'm playing as a wretch. 15 Faith allows us to cast Flame Grant Me Strength, which will give us a huge damage buff, and I'll show you the difference that it makes, as well as 20 Arcanes required for the Rivers of Blood, but you can put a few more points in Arcane because it's going to scale our bleed damage. Now, I got medium rolls. Always want to be medium rolling or light rolling. And 51 poise. You want to at least hit 51. At 56 is even better, but 51 poise is great. So, I'm using the white mass. This is going to increase our bleed damage. Or it's going to increase our damage whenever we inflict bleed. Alongside the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. Blood loss and vicinity increases attack power. So, both these actually stack together, which is awesome. Uh, Millennia's armor here, you can go with whatever armor. This is just to make sure that we can get our uh, poise up to about 50 and have medium rolls. So pick whatever works best for you. I'm using the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman. The physical damage negation is huge. Uh, Carrion Filigree Crest lowers FP consumed by skills so we can spam our Corpse Piler a little bit more. Lord of Blood's Exaltation, as I said, higher damage. And the Shard of Alexander will boost the attack power skills, giving us a higher damage on our Corpse Piler from Rivers of Blood. Huge. So... As for our, uh, I guess, a little bonus, raw meat dumplings, your Mimic will use these to heal. And it says it poisons the user, but Mimics can't be poisoned, so they'll actually heal themselves with this. Nice little bonus you can throw on there, but the general way of playing with this bleed build is, um, I'll show you first what it looks like without Flame Grant Me Strength. So our normal attacks are going to deal 500 damage roughly, and then Corpse Piler doesn't even finish them off in one attack. So that is troublesome. Now, if we add in Flame Grammy Strength, you can see here, it does 600 damage now, so that's a lot more, that guy rolled off the edge. And then our Carp Piler will take them out, so that is really nice, because you want to be able to take out an enemy with the Carp Piler there. And every time that bleed gets inflicted, we increase our damage, so you can see there we have 800 damage now, because whenever we get that bleed off, it's going to further increase what we're doing for damage. So 800 on an attack when we're normally doing 500, that's pretty huge. So. Um, you gotta keep an eye on your overall FP, because it's super easy to run out of it, and that's not something that we want to have happen. Another way we can go about doing this is we can actually take out our Naga Kiba and go with jump attacks. As you can see, we can one-shot with the jump attacks. 1,600 damage is crazy. And then we can also do our normal R1 attacks there, which do a pretty good amount of damage, because we, when we have two of the same weapon, we power stance them. And then that R1 or L1 attack becomes this here, which is really nice. But then also the jump attacks are really good too. Also, you can go with this and go go here with the um, attack like that with the du double slash Art of War, Ash of War on this weapon, making it a pretty effective build. If you run out of FP or you're getting low, you can literally just switch the Naga Kiba and do it that way. It's going to be similar but a little bit less reach. Funny enough, because the sword itself is so big, but you actually have less reach with this, because with the Rivers of Blood, you actually get the um, 
Let me pull it back out there. With the Rivers of Blood, you actually get a little bit of an extra... Extra range on this uh, Corpse Piler attack, so that's really nice. Another bonus, since we have Flame Grammy Strength, we can also equip the Rot Breath. This isn't going to be your go-to for every boss, but Rot can actually... It can take down a lot of bosses because the Rot Breath... Oh, we took them out. Applying Scarlet Rot will deal a ton of damage, and it does damage over time, so you could... Ideally, get in, get rot on the target, and then just resort to your corpse piler and then jump attacks with this as well. But I'll show you here how powerful this can be, because this can literally just walk away a ton of enemies all at once. I didn't even have Flame Grammy Strength set up there, but that's the beauty of it, is it does so much damage. You can hit from a pretty good range too, as you can see there. The range is honestly really good on the corpse piler. But you can also switch to the Naga Keep at any time, and they're both great options. So that's a very powerful bleed build. Lord of Blood, basically, right outside Moog's dynasty here. So, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with the Elden Ring DLC. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.